All right, we're back. Draft Champions is here on Madden 16. Had a stream crash, and I'm not exactly sure why, but it happened. So that's why I'm doing this little test stream here before I set up my green screen and whatnot. I want to make sure I can actually stream something consistently, although uh, dropping frames only a few minutes in is definitely not promising. So we have a uh, brand new draft. I'm about to begin. I want to play some Draft Champions. Pete Carroll, Dan Quinn, Mike Pettin. Let me know in the comment section who you guys want to see. Pete Carroll is usually, if he's there, I don't go away from him. I could go Mike Pettin, have a 3-4 defense, try out a short pass run stuff chemistry with Dan Quinn. Pete Carroll is just what I'm normally comfortable with. Love playing zone defense, although I play a lot more man this year. And I like the 4-3 playbook. Uh, if the Browns had a 4-3 here, I'd probably jump on that one. It's a multiple offense. I think I've used their playbook before. I can't remember if I even like it, but it's a thing. So, let's see. We got two Dan Quinn comments. We got another Dan, a Petten, a Quinn, a Kane. Oh, that's me. Carol. Okay, we're going to go Dan Quinn. We're going to go Dan Quinn this time. Switch it up. Run stuff. Is that really going to be beneficial? It could, because block shedding is good in the past game as well. So we're off here in this brand new edition of Draft Champions. It's Jerry Itachu, Marcel Reese, or No Sean Moreno. I can definitely find a better running back than No Sean, so taking him in the first round is definitely a no-go. Marcel Reese, not going to find a better fullback most likely unless I get a legend. And, and even in that case, it probably wouldn't be something I'd want to do. So, Jerry Itachu, I like that 88 speed. I'm a sucker for fast front seven guys. Fits my chemistry. Play him at end. Can probably pull it off. We'll go Jerry Itachu in round one. I know you guys want to see Reese, but it's okay. Greg Olson to Sean Gibson or Jonathan Joseph. I like my corners, although 5'11", 88 speed, 89 man. Not really elite in any category, so I'm not going to take Jonathan Joseph this early. I don't pass on Greg Olson very often, and I'm not about to begin now. So I get that team-style boost. Round three, Brian Arakpo, Matthias Kiwanuka, or this Patrick Chung. So an 89-speed safety with 82 zone, or I can get a left end. That has great finesse moves, 84 speed, 86 strength, and fits my chemistry. Hmm. What do you guys think here? I'm kind of leaning towards this Kiwanuka. I've never used this card, although a Rackbow's right there too. I kind of forgot about him in the mix here. Also a flashback, just doesn't fit my chemistry. Better pursuit, better power move, better hit power. Stronger, same speed. Like this Arakpo's a better card, it's just do I want to take the boost? Actually, look at the swing here in the upper right hand corner. 50 run stuff if I take Arakpo, 65 if I take Kiwanuka. So Arakpo must be like negating something. So I could take Kiwanuka. They're both great. I think Arakpo is better. Do I take the team style here? We're going to do it. Kiwanuka it is. He is left end. Jerry Tachu the right end. Barry Church, Dante Hightower, or Ryan Kerrigan. This is a pretty easy decision for me. Barry Church is not good enough in coverage. And I'm going to take Dante Hightower. I didn't get a linebacker in my last draft. So there we go. Starting outside linebacker for me. And the next time around, Devin McCourty is there. I'm probably going to end up taking him. Although Bobby Wagner is right there. Robert Quinn, another pass rusher. But McCourty, there aren't very many free safeties that can do what Devin McCourty does. And with 90 speed, 94 zone coverage, I'm not going to find a better safety. Most likely. I could find like a legend or something down the line, but I can't pass on McCourty here. Even if it does uh, mean not taking Robert Quinn and getting that boost there to pass rush or run stuff, but also a great pass rusher. I'll take McCourty. All right, Dwayne Brown, oh, Tyler Eifert, or Jordan Matthews. This Matthews has 92 speed. What's the catching? 91. Okay, I was a little bit worried about his catching. Not very elusive. Okay release, okay route running, 93 catching traffic. 
The Eifer is definitely a better player. He's just not a wide receiver, which I don't need to have, you know, all my best pass targets be wide receivers. I love twin tight end. So Tyler Eifert and Greg Olson will be a great combo. There's also Dwayne Brown if I want to go get a good left tackle. So it's kind of a it's a tough one here. Do I want an offensive lineman? I haven't taken one yet. Another good tight end or my first receiver. That's an 84. I think I'm going to go BPA, 90 overall. Go Dwayne Brown, 95 pass block, 89 run block. I can work with that. I still have a good tight end, so I'm okay with that. Oh, boy, Luke Keekley's here. So is Marshall Yonda and Nick Mangold. I got to go Luke. Luke and Hightower, that's going to be an excellent nickel. That's going to be unstoppable. We're going to go Luke Keekley, not debate about that one too much and talk myself out of it. Matt Ryan, Julian Edelman, or Geno Atkins? Geno fits my style. Edelman is the type of receiver I like to use. 90 route running. Matt Ryan, good quarterback, definitely can do what I need a quarterback to do. So, do I go with the quarterback now or do I wait? Geno Atkins is there. Fits my chemistry. I love having front seven guys on here to hopefully apply pressure. Geno Atkins and Gerald McCoy were two guys I loved getting early in draft champions this year. It looks like the comments are pretty split for Edelman and Atkins. Not many loving the Matt Ryan. Not many. I'm sure Dark Falcon wants Matt Ryan, but... Uh, I'm going to roll the dice here. I'm going to go Geno Atkins. And hope that I get some really good offensive rounds upcoming. Michael Brockers, Zach Morton, or Glover Quinn. I already have a free safety. Glover Quinn would be great if I didn't have um, Devin McCourty. Michael Brockers, Zach Morton. I could use an interior run blocker. I don't have a running back yet, so I really got to get a quarterback, a receiver, and a running back, and I have a few rounds to do that, but I'm not going to get any progress toward that this round. Muhammad Wilkerson, Haloti Nada, or Koa Misi. Things could be getting a little unbalanced if the draft doesn't start going in a different direction. I've drafted a bunch of defenders, and it's going to happen here again. Wilkerson there, could play him at defensive tackle, but I'm going to go with Haloti Nada. Pair him up with Geno Atkins. I have my entire defensive line. And now, T.Y. Hilton, Vaughn Miller. Would love to have that Vaughn Miller. Or Santonio Holmes flashback. It's really hard for me to justify passing on a receiver at this position. The only drawback is that 82 route running. And T.Y. Hilton's a 92. So, would I be better off going with T.Y. Hilton? I mean, they're both fast. I'm not like a vertical passing guy. I definitely want better route running. 82 versus 92. I think I gotta go TY. It's probably against what most would do. But that route running difference is probably, you know, enough to... Oh, the chat does not believe so. They want Santonio. Do I go with the chat or do I go with myself? 511 versus 59. Santonio with that 82 route running. I believe I can scheme him open. I'll go with Santonio Holmes. I'll scheme him open. Quell Jackson, William Golston, or Adam Jones? Don't have a corner yet. Let's just go Adam Jones and hope that I get a quarterback and a running back in these last few rounds. Oh, not this one. Jonathan Cyprian, Derek Carrier, and Allen Robinson. So Cyprian, not a cover guy. He's a run stopper. And then Allen Robinson, whom I'm obviously very familiar with, my Jags franchise, pair him up with Santonio. I'm going to go Allen Robinson, but I have no quarterback and I have no running back. Come on, I got to get one of the two now, and I, I can get a running back. I can. Not a great one. Reggie Bush is there. He's 87 speed. He's definitely not the Reggie Bush of old. Man, this is going to be a weird team to play with. This is going to be weird. We're going to be carried by our defense. I got to go Reggie Bush. I don't feel like I have an option. I got to go Reggie Bush. And in the final round, I don't even get a quarterback. I'm Matt Schaub in this one. So really all I can do is go Eric Dickerson 
and run the football the entire time. I have Reggie Bush, but I can't justify getting a third receiver. Not with Matt Schaub or Mark Sanchez at quarterback. This is what happened when you passed on Matty Ice. You know, I expected to get one more crack at a quarterback, and I didn't. So here we are. I got Eric Dickerson and Reggie Bush, Allen Robinson, Santonio Holmes, and Greg Olson. Okay. We got Dickerson. 81 overall team, 73 team style in both categories. Boy, do I hope that my quarterback position does not cost me a game. I really hope it doesn't. All right, how the accuracies look. I just want to see who has the better throw accuracy short. Looks like Schaub does, but I'm trusting Matt Schaub, guys. I have to trust Matt Schaub. Boy, this is going to be a dink and dunk passing game. Santonio Holmes' speed is probably not going to be utilized much before the catch. Let's go defense, Jerry Itachu, Nada, Atkins, Kiwanuka, backed up by Hightower, Keekly, Devin McCourty, and Adam Jones. This is definitely a team I'm not super confident in, I'll say that right now. I'm not super confident in this team. But, time to play. I am no stranger to relying on my running back to win games. Running game plus defense. Sounds like the team I watch every Sunday. So let's jump into a game and hope that Eric Dickerson is all we need on offense. I have a couple blockers, not many. I have defense, although I don't have a secondary. This team is so weird. This is just one of those drafts that I'm going to have to figure out a way to make it work. So here we go. I'm up against Randall Cunningham, Jericho Cotri flashback, Anthony Sherman fullback. Now, I do not like going against these dual threat quarterbacks because it's either you blitz to get pressure and he beats you with his arm or you drop seven or eight in coverage and he beats you with his legs. So I got to find a happy medium, contain the quarterback somehow while maintaining coverage. It's not going to be easy. I'm not going to want to get into a foot race on offense with Matt Schaub at quarterback. So here we go. The, dra the team draft on YouTube is stacked. I love that team I drafted. In today's draft champions video, if you haven't watched it, after the stream, go check it out. That team is nice. And this team, I don't think compares to it, but We'll see if we can get it done anyway. This defense is definitely something I'm excited about. And Theo Riddick, if we could bring him down, which we do at the 27. All right. So it's going to be all about defense. I do have a good front four, so I really, really do not want to have to blitz to get pressure. Not against a quarterback like Randall Cunningham, who can make plays all over the field. So here, first and 10. I see him calling the vertical plays. And that was out of position there. That's a catch. Is that Doug Baldwin? Every time I've seen 89 on Madden lately, it's been Doug Baldwin. I couldn't tell. And it was Jericho Cotchery. Okay, he's the 89. So those verticals, got to keep an eye on those. Got to get more purple zones involved. Basically, if he wants the flats, he can have them. I'll adjust if he goes there. And now, trying to run the football. Theo Riddick. So that's actually his starting running back. And that's good for me, because now I can focus more on pass defense. Although he did get nine on his first carry, so who knows. Kirk Cousins just got a team of the week. Oh no, I'm not picking that up. I'm more than happy with my Derek Carr Football Outsiders edition. Second down and one, and down goes Cunningham. He's sacked by Matthias Kiwanuka. Not fooled by that play action one bit. So here we go. We're going to bring a zone blitz. Just hope that he has a hot read that he's overconfident in and makes a mistake. Going to definitely drop Johnson here into a purple in case he runs that play-action verts play. And he does call verts. And intercepted by Adam Jones. Not going to get much of a return, but the defense does what I asked them to do. 
called the verts, ran into trouble. Adam Jones, only like 5'8". Hard to see him out there. So here we go. Eric Dickerson in the backfield. And he's going to get it. On the first play and maybe every other play. Eric Dickerson for a gain of five. This is the kind of play I will trust Matt Schaub to make. We got uh, very short routes. I trust Matt Schaub in this situation. Let me analyze his DBs. They don't appear very good. Not at all. Not even sure what he drafted. We'll take that right there. Allen Robinson is Matt Schaub. Does throw it. And it wasn't a pick six, everybody. So I'm liking the start we're off to. It's much better than the defensive starts I've gotten used to. So far, he's aligning in a way that will allow him to combat my running game, which I'm not a huge fan of. I just like coming out spread run and super power run and seeing how teams or players online will react. Will they go 4-3 when I go to a, a spread running game? Will they go nickel when I'm going with a power running game? So far, this guy has called the defense that's actually pretty smart, so I'm not going to be able to probably gash him for those big plays I would against other defenses. But I'm definitely not looking to get too crazy with this offense. I'm going to see what look he gives me here at this end of round. Probably going to audible out of it. 95 is way too wide. Not going to happen. So we're going to run inside again. And this time it's Andre Williams. Where is Reggie Bush? Did I not get him in there? I guess not. He's called a smart defense so far. Slowly drive down the field. Don't try and go deep with Schaub. Uh, I'm not going to San Antonio Holmes. I'm not going to San Antonio Holmes. It's not going to happen. Greg Olson instead. First down inside the red zone. Matt Schaub getting it done on his first possession, everybody. Man, he's calling the right formations, and he's not getting over-aggressive. I got Reggie Bush playing receiver too much. I got a man open there in the flats. That's Bohannon. Bohannon is brought down after a good pickup. We'll bleed this clock down to the second quarter. Or actually, I'm not going to. Not bringing that safety down, though. He's using the middle linebacker. A little bit out of position. And Derek, or up, Derrickson, Dickerson gets us down to the three. So is Reggie Bush really my wide receiver too? Because, well, I guess he's a really high overall wide receiver. And Allen Robinson is a high 70s, so I definitely got to change that. I want A-Rob out there. We're going to go counter, Dickerson, touchdown. So a pretty good first series on both defense and offense for this team. Far from what I expected. I got a big interception by Adam Jones, followed by a drive where we threw it with Matt Schaub a few times and ran it with Eric Dickerson. This is what we got to do to win games. Turnovers and then long drives. Donnie Avery now on the return. Uh-oh, I'm getting out of position here. Thank you, Palmer. I think that's Nathan Palmer who made the play. Let me get Robinson at wide receiver just so I'm not dealing with a, a third down where I call a play where I would want a possession receiver and instead I have a running back. Marquess Wilson. I'll let Reggie Bush play the slot. I drafted him. I might as well use him. We can't hear you very well. Hmm, it shouldn't be very quiet. I did I did significant testing with my audio. I don't have any game audio. I'm still working on some things with the game audio here in OBS. This is really just a test stream that I'm hoping goes well. Double coverage! And pick that! There we go, McCourty! You're the best safety, thank you! No! No, McCourty! What are you doing? No! No! The tipped interception and McCourty fumbles it right back to him. Are you kidding me? No. Devin McCourty. No. I cannot believe that just happened. It's essentially a deep ball that connected. He's going long again. 
and completes it for a touchdown. What a turn of events. He pulled a Robert Meacham. Wow, that's a 2009 reference. I'm impressed. Saints against the Redskins back in 09. A game the Redskins should have won. Robert Meacham made an incredible play, and I forget who picked it off, and he t returned it for a touchdown. Good reference. All right, 7-7. Seven to seven. Definitely not the second turnover capitalization I was looking to have. So we're going back to offense, running the football, Eric Dickerson stuff, you know, bench Devin McCourty. Yeah, I should have picked up that Glover Quinn, huh? He doesn't fumble that play. Uh-oh, Eric Dickerson tried to cut left and hopefully break one tackle and zoom, but it wasn't going to happen. Take the first down. Honestly, my favorite passing plays this year are just the basic concepts that real NFL teams run, like spot, levels, stick. That's my game this year. Out of the backfield, Andre Williams. He's pretty slow. I can't believe he caught the ball first off. He's got, I don't think he had a single career catch in college. So I'm pretty sure his catching rating is pretty low in Madden. Ronnie Hillman. He's going to get a turn. And that was kind of a waste of a play. So 38-yard line. Let me see. What does this playbook have for levels? That's become my favorite passing concept this year just because the ins are good man beaters and they also can beat um zone over the middle and there's levels i couldn't find it we got one play one play dan quinn you don't run levels i love levels i barely get the snap off and oh my goodness matt schaub can't even throw to reggie bush on an in Okay, okay. I'm going to call same play because levels are really good. I got Robinson on the corner. I love that route. So here we go. It's a third down, and Eric Dickerson comes through with the first down. Thank you. Two-minute warning. So we're moving the football, even with Matt Schaub and his weird arm doing things that we don't want him to do. We got Eric Dickerson going against the weak side here. Oh, come on. Drive through that tackler. Who is that? Walter Thurman. You can drive through him. All right. Second down and seven. Oh, he's committing. He's committing. Oh, he got it! There's Greg Olson, and he breaks the tackle for the touchdown! He's doing these commits, and I'm trying to counter the best I can. I roll left, throw it off balance, Matt Schaub throws it perfectly. I can't ask for any more than that right there. Please stop throwing, it scares me. Trust me, guys. If anybody can succeed with Matt Schaub, it's me. I run a dink and dunk passing game, I take very little chances. The ones I do take are really stupid. So I can do this with Matt Schaub. Sendejo with a tackle. User tackle in space. I did it. Okay, Andre Williams had 10 catches in college and 2 catches this year. He just doesn't catch the ball very often. He also, uh... I don't know where I was going with that. I was going to say something and I forgot. He's going deep! He's testing him! No! Kachari wins for another big play. The second time. This is not the ideal outcome. Oh, well, he does have an 89 bald win, too, so I'm not really all that wrong. Get some pressure, guys. Too many clean pockets, and look at that. He shobbed it. He just shobbed that one. I like it. That mesh concept, though, is pretty uh, nasty on here. I don't run as much mesh. I like running levels more. Uh, oh! Oh, high tower! No! Another drop. Or, first drop, but second incompletion in a row. And now we're going to be here looking for a big play on third down. Gotta have... Oh, no. I screwed up the zones, didn't I? 
I want to have a purple or two in there. Not going to get it, and he gets the first down. McCourty can't jar the ball loose, so he's got a first down at the 20. I had my zones all mixed up there, but they weren't zones that would have mattered in that play. I was going to have purples instead of uh, the flats. What do we got this time? Oh, he's got the positioning. Donnie Avery in front of the corner. Or the defensive back, I didn't see the name. So inside, I'm going to call a timeout here. Not let him bleed this clock. Can I force a mistake? Can I force one mistake? I usually don't go man coverage here, but I don't like my... I don't have much success with zone coverage down here either. Theo Riddick on the toss. That's a touchdown. So we're back to a tied game. That Devin McCourty interception fumble still looms large. I'm not very happy about that outcome. He's tied the game. I have 41 seconds. I left myself two timeouts. And I might have to get a little more aggressive with Matt Schaub, guys. This could be the danger zone for this offense. We got Reggie Bush. We're going to angle this inside. He's not going anywhere. I don't want to turn up the sideline much. I like getting those lanes inside and just basically following my blocks. So from the 37-yard line, or 23-yard line with 37 seconds, I want to see if we can stop the run. Oh, come on. I thought the fullback would get there in time and I would be gone. Dickerson, if you were a little bit slower... And if I was a little bit more patient. All right, got a high-low concept here in the middle. I'll take the low. Tommy Bohannon, first down, and we'll tie him out. High-low concepts are my favorite this year. Especially against zone. We're going to go five wide now. This is going to be bad. This is going to be interesting. A-Rob. What's his matchup? What's the release matchup? Could we go deep here? Matchup stick. Tell me it's a plus 28 release. Here goes Allen Robinson. We're going to go up top for him. Robinson has it knocked away. Good safety play. Not sure who his safety is, but that was good. And it wasn't even man, so it really wasn't a big deal that he got such a good release. It was helpful, but not enough. So now, trying to get in field goal range. I got a ways to go for that, though. So I could try stretching the field with Dickerson and hopefully, oh, if he's playing cover two, this could be a touchdown Allen Robinson. This could be. Nope, not quite. That corner played with more depth than I expected. So six seconds to go. I still have a potential opportunity for a quick play plus a timeout plus a field goal, but we'll see. If he's in zone here, hopefully Robinson and Dickerson can open something up. I'm going to get aggressive here. Going deep, Eric Dickerson, come on! Touchdown! Matt Schaub to Eric Dickerson! It's the, what's the freaking thing they say? I forget, the tandem, I, I forgot the term I was going to say. Oh well, blown call on my end, but it's a touchdown, I'll take it. Utilizing Eric Dickerson, downfield. We take the lead with one second to go in the half. Things are looking a lot better now. Shop for MVP, guys. Get the hashtag going. And now let's take this to halftime. Nothing funny. Little pooch kick, and he gets the fair catch off. That was... Probably not wise on my part, but he's still got to go a really long way. Kenya okay, forgot to say no flags. Exactly. I should have said it. Game is getting a little bit laggy, so it's not your guys' connection. The game is just uh, a little laggy, but it seems to have recovered. Alright, Kiwanuka. Three-man rush. This is where it's your time to shine. Uh-oh. It's... I thought it was a fumble. And we got the pressure there, actually, with uh, Tachu, I believe. I taught you that move. You like that one? Was that one bad? At least I tried. 
All right. Reggie Bush in the end zone here on the return. Adam Jones, a lead blocker. It doesn't actually fail as bad as I thought. And we get a decent return. Shab is a 100 overall. He's playing like it outside of one pass, basically. All right, we're playing well. Comments are rolling in. Not a very good reception for that pun, surprisingly. Hands off for Eric Dickerson. He's going to get outside, and I wanted to do something nifty to get upfield, but I'll just take my nine yards and not do anything dumb. Let's see, he called a blitz that time. That's interesting. If he calls a blitz on this play, I'm going to counter with a pitch on the following. Is that a flashback, Bush? No, it's just gold. Hand off to Andre Williams. And he picks up a first down. Didn't see a run blitz that time. A zone blitz. Do not zone blitz against the run. It's not going to work out very well. I wouldn't call a zone blitz on first down in very many situations. You have defensive linemen dropping back, so they're not attacking the running back. You have linebackers taking on linemen. That's a worse matchup. Do not zone blitz on first down unless it's an obvious passing situation. That's my tip for you guys. Didn't get anything on that run, by the way, with Dickerson. So We're going to go run, run, pass. That's going to be our template. Rams just made quarterback change? Really? They have Austin Davis still? Who are they starting? Oh, wow. They're going to play Case Keenum. Can't wait for his team of the week card as Eric Dickerson picks up another eight. And that'll set up a third and two. What do you do here? Do you go hand off Dickerson, best player on the team, or do you put the ball back in the hands of Matt Schaub? It really is a tough dilemma here. Oh, wow. Andre Williams is on the field. So, here we go. Third down and three, and I throw it right to a person on their team. Wise move. Didn't work out. Definitely had other guys open. That was my first read. Wanted to force it to Greg Olson, and now I'm stuck here punting the football. Two hundred and twenty viewers. Thank you all for coming to today's stream. I do plan on streaming again tomorrow. Oh, I've had some drop frames, but I haven't had a stream crash. That's uh, a combination I'm okay with. I want to get rid of those drop frames, though. I'm not sure why that's happening. As I down that punt beautifully at the six-yard line. That was nice. But my uh, goal today was to put together a good stream for you guys, an entertaining one that went well, and then stream again tomorrow after I set up my green screen and we step up the quality a little bit. That was the plan. And I may have to iron out some other streaming issues. We've had drop frames. But hopefully it's not a consistent issue. He's hit as he throws. He goes deep again. Pick that. No. Bradley Roby, or is that Nikel Roby? I don't know, because Bradley Roby is R-O-B-Y. I want to say that's Nikel Roby. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I'm not 100% sure which Roby that is, but I know he dropped it. Cunningham back to pass again, and complete. All he wants to do is throw it to that flashback. What's his face? Jericho Cotchery, who had a very quiet 10-touchdown season two years ago with the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm not sure if that's the flashback year. It could be. Probably. Hands out for Theo Riddick looking to get to the edge. And he makes a nice cut up field to get about three. It was Nikel Roby. I was correct. But yeah, I'm not sure why exactly I'm dropping frames. It's not like a consistent thing. After the stream crash the first time, I did lower the bit rate a little bit. I'm not sure what I had the bit rate as on my previous computer. I might have to just check that and go back to it. He goes deep again, and I just cannot defend this flashback Jericho Kotchery. I'm done playing zone. 
it's over. It's all over. I gotta play man. I gotta have safety help. I gotta have Devin McCourty redeem himself. Hoping it doesn't run it here as I go nickel. It probably is. This is going to be a stretch, isn't it? Game is a little bit laggy. He does call that stretch. Ill-advised spin move allows me to make the tackle. Thank you. We're going to keep the safety help. Someone get pressure, please. I'll use her Johnson here. Kotri line up in the slot, by the way, watching the corner route. And he goes back the other way. Oh, it's almost a catch for Doug Baldwin. McCourty whiffed. And I want that McCourty to redeem himself. That was one of my best picks. All right, I'm going to use her Keekly this time against Ronnie Hillman. And we got him taken care of, except for he's got the speed to break away. I spoke too soon. And I missed the tackle, and he jukes up the field, and I give up a touchdown. <laughs> All right. I hate man coverage against running backs, even though I thought Luke Keekley could contain him. Ronnie Hillman's speedy, and I do some stupid open field tackling stuff, and he scores. All right, guys. 21 to 21. It's beginning to be crunch time made some mistakes in this game one clearly not my fault Devin McCourty but now we got Reggie Bush to the 26 yard line Kane where's the face cam I do plan on that being back tomorrow today was just like okay first stream on this computer let's just make sure I can do it it's time for the shop Will Langford start when Forte starts? I assume you mean return. He better not because Forte needs to help my fantasy team recover. And wow, why is Andre Williams in the backfield? Why isn't, where is Eric Dickerson, a.k.a. the offense? Losing three on first down was not an ideal outcome. Okay. I want to know where Eric Dickerson went. He's not on the field. Second down. Wide open. There's Greg Olson. Thank you. Is Greg Olson going to take over this offense? Because I don't know where Eric Dickerson went. He's just gone. Where is he? When did he get hurt? I don't recall him ever getting injured. Okay. It doesn't show him as injured, but he's clearly tired. I'm not sure where he went. So I guess I'm going to keep throwing it. Uh-oh, late and outside, but I get away with it. Greg Olson for a gain of six or seven. Matt Schaub, pretty efficient numbers. I can't complain with that production. We're going to definitely run some clock on this possession, and hopefully Eric Dickerson returns because I did not plan on using this Andre Williams. We're going to run this clock down a bit. And now we shall snap. Hand off Andre Williams. Not quite as powerful as Eric Dickerson. He only gets a yard. Big third down and two. And I'll definitely go for it if it comes down to it. I got to get Ronnie Hillman out there now. We're in the shotgun. We're going to go with a run. A little inside zone. Greg Olson is... Not covered over the top, but I'm going to still run it. Ronnie Hillman picks up the first down and luckily hangs on to the football for me. All right. He called zone on that last play, so I want to see. Press the corner. I want you to press the corner because it will give Hillman an easier chance to get down the field. Oh, boy. I like my chances here. Oh, he's playing some man now. Shab running. I saw that and just panicked. I'm running with Matt Schaub and not fumbling, thankfully. Seven-yard gain. So that takes us down to the two-minute warning. Still no sign of Eric Dickerson in the backfield. Four. 
What is a catch? That's my question for you guys. Oh, he ran commit. And we're going to go outside. Ronnie Hillman, he's inside the 20. And he's going to give me the lead. After tying the game for my opponent, swaps jerseys, comes to my side, and scores another touchdown. What a generous guy is Ronnie Hillman. 28 to 21. Now the defense looking to lock down that Jericho Cotchery. I'm going to double cover him with Devin McCourty every play. If he beats me with somebody else, at least I took away his best option. That's the way I'm playing it. But first we got to stop Mr. Donnie Avery. And Avery a little shake and bake and brought down after a good return to the 23. Average return, not a good return. Giving him too much credit there. All right, so I'm going to come out nickel. Man cover, Devin McCourty. I don't care if he's on the opposite side of the field. We're going to align things really weird. Not the case. Kotchery over the or over the top of Kotchery. I have a linebacker, I think, on Donnie Avery. That's a matchup nightmare. And Keekley gets beat. Oh, no, Phils! Someone's going to bring him down. My goodness. All the way to the 41. Defense getting gashed. That mesh. Man. I don't want to play zone. I really don't want to play zone. Man cover against Kotchery. There's the double. A minute 26. Now he goes fullback dive, and that's going to be stopped after a gain of four. I just got to protect the end zone. That's all I have to do on this possession. His jukes have been on point. That's a good point, Sneaky. Oh, I didn't get my double coverage. Couldn't get my rush. And he completes the pass. Again, Kotchery now to the 22. He would be smart to utilize the clock here. I may start using timeouts soon. All right. We're going to go a little bit of weird robber coverage here. And there's pressure and coverage. We get the combo finally. Four verts didn't work that time. We're going to go dime just because it seems like I have really bad mismatches. I still have Theo Riddick and Keekly as a matchup. Oh, I didn't get McCourty on him this time. And that is a good play. Nikel Roby making sure that Fells can't get to the spot. All right, dime defense once again. Cordy's going to be doubled up. He, I see Clive Wolford out there. That's pretty cool. Cotry better watch out. I'm going to go middle deep zone here. And it's a dump off instead. And Riddick's got it. He gets past Keekly and Roby and is down to the one. I'm using my timeouts now. Cannot stop his running backs out of the backfield. So if he scores, I just want to leave myself with time. If he wants to drain the clock... Then he's going to have to score with little time remaining. We'll see how this goes. We will see how this goes, everybody. The goal line packages are in. It's going to be power versus power. And I tried jumping it. Failed. Hand off Riddick. Touchdown. Now, will he go for two? That's the question. Because... If I was him, I'd trust my offense to get a two-point conversion. And for me, definitely worried if he goes for two. Puts a lot of pressure on me. He's going for two. He's going for two, guys. So here we go. We got to get the two-point conversion stuff. Otherwise, a lot of pressure on the offense. And it's going to be a toss. And he's got it. Theo Riddick for the two-point conversion. Now I have 37 seconds to get points of any kind. Here we go, guys. Boom, Blair Walsh kicks it deep. We're going to take it from the 20. I don't want any time coming off the clock with a kick return. We're going for the Matt Schaub comeback. We got to get in field goal range at the very least, and we don't have great kickers. I mean, he has Blair Walsh, so he's a good kicker. I don't think I have a good one myself, though. So here we go. 37 seconds. First play. Santonio. Use the speed. First down. Timeout. 
good play that time. All right, guys, 30 seconds to go in the game. I really don't want to throw a screen to Andre Williams. So I'm going to call the same thing. And this time, Olsen. Hurry things along. 23 seconds on the clock. It was a short play, so we can get back to the line in quite a hurry. Now we are going to call the screen. we got to get blocks in front. Andre Williams with the catch. And he's going to get outside, run up the sideline, and out of bounds at the 34-yard line. I still have my timeout. So now we got to get a little bit closer. We got to get a little bit closer. Right here, it's a 51 yard field goal try. I want to make that just a little shorter. Shop. Ronnie Hillman breaks the tackle, picks up a couple. And so it comes down to this, guys. It is time for the game winning field goal try. I don't know who my kicker is. That is not good coaching. It is Jay Feely, gloves and all. Can Jay Feely kick us to victory? We're about to find out, everybody. Here we go. This is for the win. Jay Feely from 47, and the try is good. Game over. I have won with Matt Schaub at quarterback. How about that? There we go. Hit that pass to Santonio Holmes. Another short pass to Greg Olson. Screen to Andre Williams. Run with Ronnie Hillman. That's how we got in range for that game-winning field goal. There we go. Jay Feely for the clutch victory. That's a fun game. That was fun. Matt Schaub led our comeback efforts. Devin McCourty, if you wouldn't have fumbled that one interception, we probably wouldn't have even been in that situation. And we definitely could not stop that Jericho Cotri. There's one of his highlights. That was just nasty. We had some bad mismatches on defense. There was a Ronnie Hillman touchdown that really emphasized that point. But, uh, gotta give it up for Matt Schaub, guys. He made some plays in the face of adversity. He did some great things for this football team. He's a veteran. He knows how to get it done. I'm not sure what happened to Eric Dickerson, but hopefully he returns for game two with this team. Gave up a lot of yards in the passing game, and I still threw 232 myself. I'm shocked. I got to see these in-depth stats. I got to take a look at this here. I was 14 of 17, so I was more efficient with Schaub, although I played a more efficient game. Two touchdowns. He threw two picks. I threw zero. Eric Dickerson, 11 carries, 68 yards, one touchdown. Theo Riddick, two touchdowns. Ronnie Hillman, one for me. Receiving. Kotri did all of that. A buck 77 and a score. I had Greg Olson. Eric Dickerson had that big catch before halftime. And that actually is a play that's easy to overlook because it uh, was right before halftime. But that was a great deep pass to Dickerson, and he made the catch. Just didn't really see much of him afterwards. Didn't see much of Allen Robinson. How long was that screen, by the way, for Andre Williams? That was a 26-yarder? Man, that was a risky call on my part. I would have rather had Ronnie Hillman, but I wonder if Andre Williams being out there was better because he's a little bit slower, so his blocks have a little bit more time to set up, and the blocking was good, so I had no chance to overrun those blocks. Maybe that was just a, a good thing to have him out there. This team is certainly not great, but this team won. That's all I care about. So let's go get me a nice Matt Schaub thumbnail. I want it to be him throwing, actually. I do think I'll throw this up on my YouTube channel. Might be a little bit confusing because I just put up a video today with a brand new team. Oh, wow. Let's get this clip of him here. Or maybe not. It kind of looks weird. Is there a celebration there at the end? Matt Schaub. Oh, that is gold. Matt Schaub, everybody. 
He's number one. Let me get a nice angle here. Here's a focal right. Just giving myself a few different angles to work with here with Shab. Got to get those thumbnail opportunities. I can't believe I won with Matt Schaub, though. And that Schaub actually played a very good game. I'm impressed with Matt Schaub today. Anything else worth looking at back in this game? Here was the Matt Schaub touchdown. Fake to Eric Dickerson. Then Schaub rolling left. Look at this throw-off balance. And Greg Olson hauls it in. Breaks that tackle. And touchdown. I want to go back to Schaub, though. I got to go back to Schaub. I want to see this off balance. Is there a good celebration? But look, he sold a fake afterwards. He sold it. I like it. Look at that. Schaub looks pumped up. Schaub definitely looks pumped up. I know this probably isn't the most exciting five minutes. Just give myself some good thumbnail options. Alright, a 31 to 29 victory. That is a fun way to kick off this season of Draft Champions. Whoa, a Mr. Hurricane stream. Yes, you almost missed it. A rare Mr. Hurricane stream. By the way, I have a question for you guys. Just, um... When you guys get, like, the notification of me streaming, is it from me tweeting? Um, Twitch automatically tweeting it out for me that I'm streaming? Or is it, like, a Twitch app on your phone? How do you guys usually find out that I'm streaming? Because I want to know. I just want to know. I like information gathering. That's a hobby of mine. So I like to know how you guys usually find out when I'm streaming. So if you are uh, tuning in late here, I just won a game with uh, Matt Schaub at quarterback, 31-29. Here is my team. Reggie Bush plays some wide receiver. Oh, I had Allen Robinson at wide receiver three. That's why things got all messed up. Let me swap those guys so Bush is now in the slot. I had to get a quarterback and a running back late. I got Bush in round 14. There was no quarterback in 15, so I got Schaub. And then I picked up his Eric Dickerson instead. Went two backs. No quarterback, basically. And two offensive linemen plus Greg Olson. Twitch app. All right, so mostly Twitch app. Mostly those of you guys on the mobile. Okay. So thank you guys for that quick info. I put together a good front four. The linebackers didn't do a great job in today's video. Devin McCourty had an ultimate choke on a play. Great interception. It was awesome. But you can't put the football on the ground. Adam Jones also had a big interception for me that he did not fumble. Important to point that out. Overall, though, I'm pretty happy with that victory. And I can't wait to uh, take that team out again. I'll look to be streaming tomorrow. I do plan on doing a uh, face cam, actually, with green screen. We'll see if I get the chroma key in there and figure out how to do all sorts of stuff with that. Never used it, so I definitely have some learning to do between tonight and tomorrow. But I will be streaming tomorrow. I have tomorrow's video already complete. I'm trying to get a day ahead on my commentary, so I finished tomorrow's video today. I'll try to finish Wednesday's video tomorrow, and I should be left with plenty of time to record some Let's Plays and also get you guys a stream sometime. I'm not sure exactly what time, but I will notify you all on Twitter. So, thank you guys for coming to today's stream. I greatly appreciate it. Definitely had some drop frames, though, and some things I have to try ironing out between tonight and tomorrow. But thank you all for tuning in. This will be on my YouTube channel sometime soon. Maybe tomorrow or the next day. I'm just trying to figure out the best way to organize it because I just put up a Draft Champions thing yesterday with a completely different team. I like sequence. I like organization. And this would definitely be disorganized, but I want to get this definitely on my YouTube channel this week. But thank you guys for tuning in. 
If you're watching on YouTube, please leave a like and subscribe. If you're watching on Twitch, hit that follow button and be notified every time that I go live. I appreciate you guys watching and giving me feedback in tonight's stream. And I will be streaming more soon. This was not just a one-time test. I'm testing it because I want to get back into more regular streaming. Especially with me dialing back how many series I'm doing on my channels. Once I'm done with the Panthers franchise and the Minnesota Dynasty and that gets even more kind of scaled back, you'll see streaming even more, and as well as more consistent content on my second channel. But, much more Draft Champions and Ultimate Team to come your way throughout this week. I have Mutt tomorrow, Draft Champions was uploaded on my channel today, and still more to come, I have plenty more gameplay to edit and post for you guys. Thank you all for watching, that is it for tonight, have a great night.